G'day legends, I hope you're all amazing. On today's installment of 5 Minute Licks, I want to run you through one of the most insane solo endings I've ever heard in my life to this day, the ending for No More Tears by Ozzy Osbourne, the tune that kind of turned Zach Wilde into a guitar god. And I had some bad tab for this back in the day and I could never play the ending like the bad tab had. Then I saw a Zach Wilde playthrough and they're doing something totally different. And I looked at it and went, I can do that. And I feel like I can finally almost play the end of this solo. I want to share it with all of you. It's this lick. <laughs> Let's break that down and I'll talk about the part that I literally struggled with until I saw Zach's playthrough online a couple of days ago and I had a light bulb aha moment and I've been able to play the solo the way they play it ever since then and I really want to share it with all of you. So the first thing is to tune your guitar to drop C sharp. So drop D down an extra half step, pile on loads and loads of grease. You know, that main riff is just one of life's simple pleasures. <laughs> With all of that in place, that ending run simply just uses notes from the pentatonic scale. It's going to feel like you're playing in D minor, but because we're tuned down, it is going to sound like it is in C sharp minor. So if you wanted to play along in standard tuning and miss out on all the fun of slinkier strings and drop C sharp, you can just do all of this one fret lower to practice along. So it starts with a six note sequence from the pentatonic scale. Basically just take fret 13 and 10 on the two high strings. And what you were going to do is play 13, 10, 13, 10 on the high string and then 13, 10 on the B. There are your first six notes. You're going to repeat that four times as a unit. Now, with the picking, Zach has this kind of floating right hand with a crazy downward pick slant. If I kind of go side on, you know, we're talking about if that's a pretty neutral pick slant like that, Zach's pick is doing stuff like this. And it really enables them to play this in a pretty relaxed manner. It almost looks like Zach is just sitting there kind of chomping some funk chords, but they're playing this. Now, if you feel like you're not slanting enough, actually try the opposite on there and like roll your wrist in this direction with it. I didn't realize I was doing this most of my life when I was playing. Uh, thank you to the one and only Troy Grady for pointing this out with the two note per string stuff, the downward pick slant really, really helps. It kind of does unlock the speed and efficiency with this. So you could sit there and practice like an upward pick slant and feel kind of how off it feels. <laughs> From there, we're just going to jump up to the next pentatonic position on the top two strings using fret 15 and 13 on both strings. It sounds like this. And I kind of like to feel a little push just with my forearm kind of resetting from, say, this position just slightly lower on the first beat of each of those or every six notes on there. It just kind of makes everything tighter rhythmically, which I like. Next up, we're going to have 17 and 15 on the E and 18, 15 on the B. Same pattern. Or is it the same pattern? I'm fairly certain that what Zach plays is three of those. And instead of playing all four notes at the end, they simply play 17, 15, and then move down to 13 because they're going to set themselves up to play another arpeggio sequence on here. That is a finer rhythmic subdivision. Basically, the notes here are going to be a B flat major arpeggio, although it's going to sound like an A major arpeggio because we're down a half step. This is one of the many fun things about teaching half a step down. But basically, fret 15 on the B string, fret 13 and 18 on the E. And what you're going to do is one economy stroke down. Zach, again, uses that extreme pick slant on there. You're going to hammer on and pull off from the top note back to the next note. So you get this kind of thing. The same thing, two frets higher, and then you finish with a bend by a whole tone on fret 20, which takes you up to the root note and that savage berserker vibrato. Now, I had some bad tab for this back in the day that basically said, you know, you keep repeating a pentatonic sequence, two notes per string. 
and you just play a sequence of four on these. And I could never figure out how Zach could play it so fast. I watched them do the playthrough and I was like, ah, oh, your economy picking and you're playing those larpeggios, that makes so much more sense. So it's taken me about 20 years to figure that out. Hopefully this little video makes it a little easier for you and, you know, put some work in and get those shredded fingertips like I'm getting right now. I haven't had calluses like this for practicing something for a little while and it was one of those things I've wanted to play this properly for so long. Kind of just accepted that Zach is a freak of nature and they're doing this thing from the bad tab and maybe the bad tab wasn't actually correct or maybe Zach played it like that on the record and adapted it to make it easier. Who knows? The mysteries of life. If you like this and you want to support my channel, there are some links in the video description. Otherwise, have a great day. Go crank some grease on your guitar and play some Aussie. I'll see you next time. Yeah.